Okay, created my very own pin particle called the band particle. My gloves on. Test number one. Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to another new release review. For today I will be covering Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp was once again directed by Peyton Reed and stars Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, and Evangeline Lilly. This time around the story is almost even simpler actually. It's pretty much like the dumbed down version is they're essentially just trying to get the proper technology in order to bring Hank Pym's Michael Douglas's wife back. There are some other stranding plot lines, but like the main base plot of the movie, that's the whole focus. To start off again, Paul Rudd. I, I love the guy, and in this one, I actually think I loved him even more than the first one. He's just, he's uh, he plays a great dad in this movie. He's a total goofball. Again, his comedic timing is perfect. He's like completely just awkward, and honestly, he just like plays the underdog role so well, because he clearly is the underdog. He's not rich like Iron Man. He doesn't have super strength like Captain America. America. He doesn't turn into a, a raging green monster like the Hulk or have a, a you know a magical hammer like Thor. He's just Paul Rudd and he's a total underdog and he plays it up so well and he does it even better in this movie I found and again I think he was fantastic. I absolutely love him in this role. I don't think they could have casted anyone better. And again the cast just overall is great. Michael Douglas kills in everything that he's in. Evangeline Lilly's great and again Michael Pena's back. I would say T.I. and David S. Malkin but sadly those guys are barely in it as much. Michael Pena is actually I think Michael Pena has more to do in this movie but the other two sadly don't get a whole lot of screen time. When they are in it they put it to good use but but they don't have a lot of screen time in this one, which I thought kind of sucked. But they make up for it with Lawrence Fishburne being on board for this time. I thought he was very well in this role. And the villain-ish, or at least one of the villains, Hannah John Kamen, she does a pretty good job actually, despite the villain role not being so great, which we'll get into later. Her performance was pretty well done too. Michelle Pfeiffer plays like Hank Pym's wife in this but she's like barely in it at all. I mean, maybe some people might hype up Michelle Pfeiffer being in it, but you know, sorry to disappoint, she's barely in the movie. And next is something I'm not gonna go on too much. Yeah, like I said, the first one, the comedy is what really saved this movie for me, and I'm happy to report, at least in my mind, the comedy was even better in this one. I found this movie loads upon loads funnier than the first movie. There were so many more jokes landed for me. I laughed way harder than I did in the first movie. So again, the comedy, they killed it on that front and I thought it was even better than the first time. And the action in this was actually, I think even better than the first one too. They stepped it up a lot. In the first one, you didn't really see him get to be Ant-Man a whole lot until towards the end and he only had like a couple of fight scenes. This one, there are fight scenes going on throughout the whole movie, a lot of action sequences, and they definitely put the technology they have to good use. They're shrinking, growing, they're using their wings, their blasters, all that stuff. It makes for a much more entertaining movie and made for much more entertaining action sequences and I thought they were very well done and having more of them definitely made the movie a lot more enjoyable. And the CGI again fantastic, the whole Ant-Man vision is great, the shrinking, the growing, all that stuff fantastic. And actually a big shout out to the de-aging technology in this because again it is spot on having a young Michael Douglas and a young Michelle Pfeiffer and even a young Lawrence Fishburne at one point in this movie, they look like spotless. It looks like they just took younger versions of them and like dubbed their voices and put it in this movie. Now I know it's not actually what they did, but they absolutely kill it in this department. The de-aging is fantastic. And second to last here guys is again the father-daughter dynamic. I loved it in the first one. Michael Douglas and Evangeline Lilly, they do fantastic. They have a much more closer and emotional bond in this movie. They do a really good job on that. And again, Paul Rudd and the younger little one who plays Cassie, they do a fantastic job. They are so adorable. She has got to be like one of the most adorable children in film recently. She is is just so cute and hit her and Paul Rudd together they make a really really good adorable little father-daughter dynamic and then the final positive guys is just the cool tech in this movie there's a lot more tech in this movie just new things that shrink new things that grow a few other things that they use in this movie I don't want to get too into spoilers or anything like that with you guys but there's a lot of new technology on showcase in this one and there wasn't the last one and a lot of it is really cool really well done the middle ground is just the fact that the story is so small scale now stepping back a bit it was good I think the Marvel Universe needed this after something like Infinity War which is just so grand but also so grim at points just a lot of at stake in that movie 
it, it tugged on the heartstrings, like I said, in my top five video. It plays on all of your emotions. This movie is just a really small scale story. It's just kind of fun and lighthearted. Some people might not like that as much. I just thought it was okay. You know, it, it, that's why it kind of falls in middle ground. Some people might be okay with it. Other people might hate it, but it is a much smaller scale. And again, it just, it's really narrow focus of just kind of that one goal of just getting her back. Carries this whole two hour movie. So it, that's where it kind of just landed in the middle ground. And the negative is the first and foremost. It was a big one for me and a lot of Marvel movies fall into this category. And that's just, again, the lack of villain. Uh, Walton Goggins is in this movie and I actually love that guy. I think he's a really, really good actor and I think he's an even better villain. I think that's where his best roles are. Sadly, he's literally just in it to be bad. The only thing he wants the whole time is, I want that tech, my buyers, I got buyers, I got buyers, I want that tech, get me that tech. And that's all he does the whole time. That's all he does. And I feel like the reason he and his goons are in this movie is so that Ant-Man of the Wasp can just beat people up. And it's not like the FBI, because the FBI is also after Scott Lang just because he's supposed to be under house arrest. So instead of beating up the FBI and being like, oh, they're kind of beating up the good guys, we just have these random faceless goons that we get to beat up. And I feel like that's the only reason that he was in this movie. And Ghost, sadly, Ghost. Ugh. What a wasted opportunity. I saw the trailers for this. I thought that was such a cool villain to have. One that can just morph through walls, can appear here, go there, go invisible. Such a cool idea, such a cool dynamic. And they nailed the concept, but the villain is just so poorly written. She's not even a real villain because she's not even actually against Ant-Man and the Wasp or against anyone really. She just wants to cure herself because her morphing, she can't control. She's apparently actually in a lot of pain from it. It caused her pain her whole life or ever since it happened to her anyway. And all she's worried about is just kind of fixing her stuff and in order to do that she needs the same tech just like Walton Goggins the tech the tech the tech but really she doesn't have a purpose in this movie and that's what sucks is that Hannah John Kamen does a really good job at portraying her in the more emotional moments you feel the emotion you feel her pain she is a really good actress but she's not given a whole lot to work with and the villain just kind of fell apart cool concept poor execution and a big promise heading in this movie was like you know even in the trailers they played it up like during infinity war after civil war da, 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 where was ant-man and you never really get an explanation you know that he was on house arrest so that's the after civil war part but it never really explains where he was during infinity war that to me felt completely unfulfilling that was something i was looking forward to just kind of that tie in even if it was just towards the end or something like that but it doesn't. And next is just a total lack of explanation on any of the new technology in this. And especially later on in the movie, there's something that happens towards like the very, very end of the movie. And I don't want to spoil it, but trust me, once you see the movie, I'm sure you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a complete lack of explanation on just about anything in this movie, anything involving the quantum realm. At one point, Paul Rudd makes a joke. Like, do you just put the word quantum in front of other smart talk just to make it sound like, you know, quantum-y or whatever the line is. And I feel like they really did do that because they don't explain any of it. They kind of just, throw out big words here and there and I understand that they're supposed to be smart people but you figured even just to to Paul Rudd and to the audience they would kind of try to explain it in simple words I'm not saying that the audience is dumb I just feel like it's a lot of made up stuff and they just don't really care to explain it they're just like oh the audience will just think it's made up stuff who cares and lastly on the negatives guys the fact that this movie just kind of goes in circles like I said the tech is a big thing in this movie and I feel like that just kind of like went in circles I was like this person has it now this person has it this done did this, this. oh that's back to their no no they just kind of kept going in circles over and over again and that's the whole movie. It's just each person kind of wants it for different reasons. Like Walton Goggins wants it for his buyers. And then Ghost wants it to fix herself. And then Ant-Man and the Wasp wanted to bring back Michelle Pfeiffer. All in all, guys, Ant-Man and the Wasp was an enjoyable movie. I laughed a lot. The action was great. The CGI was great. The cast kills it. Paul Rudd's fantastic. Uh, again, the father dynamic duo is great. A lot of the new tech, despite not being explained very well, is very cool and very interesting to watch. CGI is fantastic. Overall, it's just kind of like a fun throwaway movie. I liked it more than I expected to. I do believe I actually did like it more than the first one, but it's still kind of falls in the middle ground of the MCU and the midpoints on this movie again is the story is really small scale coming off Infinity War some people might like that other people might dislike it that's where it lands in the middle ground and again the negative the complete lack of villain just the, the kind of villains to be villains and they're not even real like real villains it doesn't explain where they were in Infinity War that was something I was looking forward to completely unsatisfied by that the total lack of explanation of any of the new tech or pretty much any of the events really that go on in the movie and the fact that it just kind of goes around in circles the story and doesn't really ever kind of go anywhere just like kind of the events in the movie is just basically this giant circle chase with scheming and planning the whole time and it never really goes anywhere so whew, with all that being said guys i'm going to give ant-man and the wasp a 7.5 out of 10.
just a smidge higher than Ant-Man. Didn't necessarily reach greatness. I feel like it could if this movie does get a third film. I feel like they could definitely take what they learned from the first one, which they did, applied it to the second one, made it better, but they can take the negatives from this one, make an even better third one. Maybe they'll pull out a Thor Ragnarok and make an amazing third one. Who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know. Do you think Ant-Man and the Wasp was a worthy follow-up, and do you think it deserves a third film? And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and that's a wrap.